basketball games. And I just uh, wanted to continue on Daniel. I know the chart behind me is for the book of Revelation. I uh, did chapter 16 with that one, talking about the bowls, uh, the southern bowls that you can, you can kind of see up there. But I was in 16. Uh, just to bring everything uh, up, up, up to speed in, in, in Daniel, you know, it's always nice to know a little bit about history um, and what's going on in the Bible. Uh, with this time so we can understand where we are and, and what's going on and so here um, let me just just read this uh, a statement out of George Washington is in uh, George, George Washington the first president once said few men have the virtue to understand the highest bidder he was right most people have a price uh, a truly uncompromising uh, person, whether it's a man or a woman, is a very rare commodity. Especially today, we see the compromising uh, going on. No, no matter what you what, what you see uh, and the position you are on the last president or whatever. Well, I mean, you just you're just watching people just bow out and go because they want to compromise with the other side now because the other side's in charge. So they're just jumping all over the place to find people standing on principles today. It's very hard. Uh, to see that uh, uh, Lou Dobbs I guess is and he's being taken off uh, the station so it's really hard to find a person with future is going to stand to the highest person comes out to him whether it's money or that we see that that our government seems to be full of money uh, people making decisions on money and the um, people that go up there lobby uh, instead of standing on the principles um, even with abortion I, I think there's 45 uh, Republicans are going to stand. Well, there's 50 of them now. So where's the other five? So anyway, you don't see that. So it's very rare to find that uncompromising person. But that that is what God and and, and that that is what God is looking for. Uh, not to do that. We find churches that are compromising all the time. That we see they're accepting things that uh, in God's words you shouldn't accept, and what God wouldn't have. And if you look back in the Old Testament, some of the things they're accepting, God did some pretty judgments against Israel. Uh, he wants uncompromising people, and we see that in this chapter. Now, Daniel was such a person. Uh, for that reason, God used Daniel as a vehicle through which to reveal an unfolding redemptive plan uh, of the history of the world. Now, now, God's never done this before in a dream, revealed history. And he said some things to some prophets and prophesying up. But this is the first time that God has actually used a dream and interpret that dream into the future, and he uses Daniel. You see, um, Daniel fa found wisdom in it. Um, you see, see, we can also find wisdom. Uh, we can also find wisdom and increase in wisdom um, when we meditate on God's Word, like Daniel did. If you go look back into the last time, we started, Daniel knew, stood, said no to the wine, said no to this. He's going to trust God. He knew God's Word. He studied God's Word. You find out later that he was actually reading Jeremiah. Uh, and some of the things that he said, and you'll see that a little bit later. But he stood on, the, and when we meditate on God's word, and meditate means we just think it over. We we get get the truths out of it. Uh, we put it in our mind, just like when we're studying for a test, uh, for school, or anything else, or we're trying to know something uh, that you like to do. If you're working on cars, you sit there and find out as much as you can, and you learn as much. That's what it's talking about here. You meditate on God's word. We can mature spiritually, like Daniel did, and Daniel trusted God. We can become the Daniels in our own society. Look, this was a young teenager, so don't ever think that God cannot use you. God used Daniel, and of course, he's for compassion to change an empire, to change the world. And he can do that with you, too. So don't ever think God cannot use you, even, even if you are a teenager. And, and we like it, like Daniel can, uh, can understand spiritual truth if we just uh, learn it. Uh, when the FBI, if somebody wants you to see a false bill, they, they, they give it a true bill first. You study that, that way you recognize the false. So the more we know about Bible doctrine, the more we did like Daniel, the more he knew, just had the Old Testament, the more he knew about God, the more you could see what the truth was. And so he grew. It's a gift of God. Um, our, uh, our focus it should be on Christ himself. We are and led by by his spirit living inside of us and that's what daniel was doing he was being led by the spirit of god because he had it because of all these uh attributes that he had god could use him and he used him in a mighty way uh because he understood and could see spiritual things now um 
in the plan is. Now, the first uh, 30 verses can be divided into two simple thoughts. The forgotten dream and the unforgettable Daniel. Uh, in this, we, we find two things going on. One, the commissioning of Daniel to reveal God's revelation. Uh, the other is the crisis uh, that is taking place at that time. Now, understand, Daniel, he's taken from whom? Just to go back, ne Nebuchadnezzar has taken him uh, back uh, from his homeland, taken him to Babylon. He's been there. Uh, he's been on this uh, diet. Uh, he's getting ready to come back. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, with the crisis, I mean, what do we think? If our government, if our capital was all torn down in Washington, D.C., there was nothing there left, and, and we're taken over by a foreign power and dragged out of our country, and we could see the same place. There was a crisis going on, and they were far from their homeland. Uh, Israel was there. Uh, Jerusalem had been destroyed. The Temple of Solomon had been destroyed. That was built, that beautiful temple. The cups were taken back, uh, the golden cups, and we're going to see what that will be associated as they desecrate that at the Babylon, at the Babylon feast. Um, they were afraid. Uh, and wouldn't we be too if, if this happened to us? Be afraid. Teenagers, uh, but these teenagers, as I mentioned, helped turn around the nation. Just one teenager. Because he knew God's word and he hung in there. Uh, so he's, he, he's on there. He's living a, a godly life. He's showing that he believes. There was no doubt about Daniel believing in God. He stood up for God. We see all that through here. He's an uncompromising man. That's another title of some books that people write about Daniel. The uncompromising Daniel. Uh, so don't discount that. Godly life, and he prayed. We see that through here. One thing you see Daniel do, he didn't get afraid. He prayed. And, of course, he gathered people. We'll see that, too. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is on the throne. Uh, it is 604 B.C. It is his second year. Uh, remember that his father, uh, after the Battle of Carchemish and coming over here in 605, his father died. Uh, they took Daniel and, and uh, me, Shadrach, and Abednego back there. Uh, and here they are. They're in their second year because he had to go back. Nebuchadnezzar had to go back and solidify his throne, get the crown, make sure he's, he's put king uh, to secure that throne. So now, uh, now they're there and they're in that, uh, that second year. And that's where we are now in chapter 2. This is 604 B.C. Now, my Bible has 604 B B.C. in it. We, we don't, there's no question about this time frame. Nobody's guessing about this. It's 604 B B.C. So we know that <coughs> from history. And it is in his second year. Daniel and his friends uh, are in this three-year course that we know they've been started in. So now they're in their second year, starting in their second year in this, in this diet. And uh, they're looking there. Uh, they've been there to speak because of the State Department. They wanted some people from the nation they had conquered to help them rule that nation. So they wanted to get the brightest. And what they figured the brightest was, of course, Daniel. And they all showed up there and they took over there. And to take over the empire up in the State Department to help, help Nebuchadnezzar rule uh, these people. So we see it. And, it's, and it tells us in the second year of the reign, of Nebuchadnezzar. So there's no deal. No, don't have to worry about that. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams within his spirit, was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Now, when somebody's in office or leadership, and uh, it, sometimes even somebody like uh, in the military, you could be a supervisor, uh, maybe at the chamber. But anyway, you look at somebody in government that has a lot of responsibilities, and when the stress is put on them, even in normal life, when stress is put on you for family, or whatever, you can have dreams. And so sometimes those dreams are, are, are very unsettling, and, that, uh, and it can keep us awake. And it's hard to go back to go, hard to go to sleep, or even go back to sleep if once we wake up. Uh, we look at our presidents. Look how much older they look when they come out of office. Like Obama a few years ago, and even Clinton, they went in there and they uh, they had dark hair. Right? But they had a lot of a lot of white hair coming out, gray hair, I guess we should say, coming out of there at the end of their term. So we can see that pressure on them. Um, and so um, we think we, we, we take our beds to prob take our problems to bed with us. We, we think we can solve them. We start to try to solve them ourselves. And before we, we know it, we woke up. That has happened to me. I, I, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm 
struggling with things, and all of a sudden, wow, here's the morning already. And I say, Lord, I, I need to get a couple hours sleep at least before I get up. So we find those things happen to us. So th this is settling. Nebuchadnezzar's troubled. Um, man, he has seen this horrible dream to him. Very horrible. The dream was huge. The statue was huge. He didn't understand what it meant. But Daniel is going to tell him, because we know Daniel, this is one of those amazing things in history uh, that the liberals don't believe. They want to say Daniel was written by somebody else. You had to go through these things to write about him as accurate as Daniel did it. Just no way, but we have to deal with those liberal guys anyway. So very few, even seminaries, teach Daniel uh, in, in detail like it is. So we're going to look at some things that we're going to see. And in verses 2 and 3, we see uh, the request of the king. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the soothsayers and the Chaldeans for to show the king the dream. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have, I have dreamed a dream, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Now, as he says, he was having a hard time with his trouble. Now, now we, right now we come to four groups, um, four groups of men. We see some of this in our State Department today or in our government, if you want to put that uh, up there in Washington. We, we see it, well, we see it in the state too, but we just look at these. Let, let's see what they are. We, we take names and we kind of put what we understand as the names today. But, but back, back here uh, in the Chaldean period, they had the magicians. Now, the magicians, they, they weren't the magicians that you think of. Uh, I can't think of a magician's name. I, I, got, I can see his picture, but... But he is not doing that. These were the clerks, uh, court reporters. They kept the records. They were the scholars of, uh, of, of the society. They, uh, they knew the language. And so they would write everything down. They recorded everything. Maybe we would call them historians today. or We, we could call them uh, clerks. We have them in our churches. We have them in the courts. We have them that, that record everything down. Even Egypt had them at that time to record history. And writing it and so they're there and they're writing everything down it's happening they're recording everything if you look at the movie moses it says that you'll, you'll, his name will be wiped out of all the things that they recorded so these were the recorders the clerks that kept the records the astrologers well what this um chaldean it really means it means whispers or really breath um one theologian that i studied he called them the mumbo jumbo boys and uh uh, I call them the hot air boys. Now we have them. We see that like like today, Th they talk, and but when they get done, you don't understand what they're saying, what they said. And, and if you listen to some of these politicians out there, they go through and they go through all this, and they go what? And even in debates for our president, sometimes they go on and they go off here, go off there, and you wouldn't know what, what in the world did they say? I just call them the hot air boys. We have a bunch of them there up there in our Congress today. They're just spewing all that hot air out there. The mumbo jumbo boys. Then we have the sorcerers. These are the men uh, where they consider prophecy came from. Uh, they were maybe which we, you would call the spiritualist uh, for the society there that was in that thing to give all these people to give any advice uh, to uh, the king. And then you had the Chaldeans, which that's really what the Babylonian Empire was, the Chaldeans. Now these were the executives. Uh, you may say the executive branch like we have in our own government. But these were the executives in there. Now, now there's four. Now, you have a fifth group, but you got to go over to verse 27 to get that in chapter 2. And it says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. See, the wise men. Now, you have the wise men. The wise men are soothsayers. These were the top men in the empire. Now, um, also, uh, I'll, I'll mention it later on. Either. Remember, this is where the wise men came to see Jesus about 18 months after he was born in the house. So that's where they came, came from. These, these really were the top guys uh, in the empire that had, the, had all the real influence on, on the king there. And there. So now in verse 4, they, they spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria. Now, all that means is is you're you're getting grammar change from that word Syriac, where the grammar changes is written in Arabic all the way to chapter seven, verse eight. Aramaic. I'm sorry, 
and I pronounced it wrong. Aramaic. Now that that's a hard language to do. The symbol is going to be cuneiform that they had to do up there. The magi magicians and the cuneiform that they did and everything. That was a tough language. That was. But from here to chapter seven. Now one one of the reasons that is is because this this part of the Daniel is written to the Chaldeans. Now the, now the Jewish people were interested in it, but uh, it was written to them specifically, and then the other parts was written in Hebrew for the Jews. And, and that's good to understand where it is because you see that break when people say, what was the Bible written in? Well, it was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Those are the three languages. So that's why that was written there because it was mainly to them, even though the Jews would become interested, we still have uh, what's, what is going on in there. Okay, let me read all the way to verse 5 and start in verse 3. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. We're understanding it. Then spake the Chaldean to the king in Syriac, which is, like I say, Aramaic. O king, live forever. And they always say that. Uh, if they didn't, you probably get, get your head handed to you. Tell the servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldean, the king is, the thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. Now, the thing is gone from me. Now, let me throw something out there, and it, it, it's pretty common now. Uh, it, it probably wasn't taught years and years ago that that he did forget it, but I don't think Nebuchadnezzar forgot the dream. Nebuchadnezzar had not forgotten his dream. But really what he done, he had lost faith in the people of his government. And let me just tell you, folks, we need to pray for our government. If any time we need as Christians and as people to be praying for our government, we need to pray for our government now. They are at the lowest, at the lowest in trust. Even some of the medical fields that we have had sitting up there uh, with Fauci, you know, there is so many people that do not believe what is being said. Our government is really one that people do not believe in anymore. And we need, we are in troubled times. And we need to be praying for our government. We need to stop to do that. The same thing was happening here. He had no trust in his people around him. And so he didn't have trust in his government. And he knew that he, if, if he could give them time, uh, that if he told them really the content, that in time they'd come up with something. He knew that. He, 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 would, he wasn't going to believe it. That's why he didn't do it. He said, I don't trust you guys. If I can give you something, you're going you're to come up with some explanation for this. Uh, you know, and I've always told people, if I don't know what you're asking me in the Bible, I'll go research it and come up with an answer for you. I just won't give you something off the top of my head uh, that may not may not be valid. So he he knew if he did that and that they'd come up. So he, he says, I am not going to play into your hands. I'm not going to play into their hands. I've given you an order. Tell me the dream. Tell me the content of the dream and the interpretation of the dream. I'm not playing with you. I'm not going to give you any parts. I'm not playing into your hands. I've given you an order. Tell me the dream. Give, give me the, the content, content and the interpretation. Without any information, then I will believe you that you actually are the leaders that you say you are. You're in touch with the astrologers. You're in touch with God. You got your prophecy. Come on, give it up to me. Come on, wise man. Let, let's get here. You're, you're telling me all this stuff, so I'm going to give it to you. And in verse 5, and the, king's, and the king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, the, the thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut to pieces, and your houses shall be made in the dome hill. They're going to kill them. Destroy their houses. They're going to kill them. If you don't do it, I'm, I, will, I will kill you if you can't tell me. Then let's look at verse 6. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it's about. If you do, man, I'm going to give you everything. See? But he had lost confidence in his government. And if, uh, and think about every, every, every Christmas thing. Nebuchadnezzar had lost faith in his government. That's why he, he, he was training Daniel. Think of that's why he was training Daniel in them and the others to take over the government, the leadership in a new government. 
he didn't trust these folks. And so he gets Daniel and all these other boys, not just his four groups, there's other ones, so they could help him rule. He didn't trust them. And he wanted new individuals in there. He wanted new people in there. And just like our government today, maybe we need all new people in a lot of our government positions today. Maybe that would help us to get out of some of the crisis that we're doing and, and get rid of some of these mumbo-jumbo boys. And we need new people. And so he's doing this. He's trying to train these kids to take over and help him rule the, co the, the government so he could find someone he could trust. And that's what we need to do, too. He lost confidence, so he says that. But if you can do it, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you great treasures, you know. And later on, we see Daniel does. Verse seven. They answered again and said, "Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will know the interpretation thereof." They knew that there was no way they were going to come up with this dream. I mean, these guys weren't done. They knew they weren't, so they kept pressuring him, trying to actually trick him into telling them. Uh, they didn't have a corner on divine truth at all. Nebuchadnezzar said he knew they would come up with something if he told them with a dream. And God is going to reveal the content and the interpretation to Daniel a little bit later. Why? Because I mentioned before him, Daniel meditated on the Word of God. Daniel studied the Word of God. Daniel wanted to know. He spent in time in prayer to know God. And God knew that he could, he could count on Daniel because he was committed to serving the Lord. You see, that's what we need to do, too, serving the Lord, not ourselves. You know, one, one of the worst things that, uh, things that touched me the most when I heard that, that, that preachers don't stay in churches more than two years, and usually they're moving on to get a better job, a better job, better. And, and I, I've seen it myself. I watch people come out here, start, start a church, and all of a sudden they're going off to be a dumb so. They came just to go, and one goes back to another church. I've watched people do that, and that's not right. Daniel wasn't that way. He come to serve God, and wherever God put him, he was going to serve. And you have some pastors out there that have been in churches 30 and 40 years, and, and that's great. But to move on, and most times they said, in, and one of the surveys take us is, why do you move? And it's usually for a better paying pastor's position. Or they want to get closer to home because they're close to retirement. Sad ways to go. Not letting God lead them, not letting the Holy Spirit lead them to a church that they can go and help. It's all about themselves and bettering themselves. And that, that's just sad. But Daniel was not that way. God knew he could depend on Daniel, that Daniel was going to do what he uh, wanted him to do. Uh, the king answered and said in verse 8, And I know of, a, know of certain that ye would gain the time because you see the thing that is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, here is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. See, just reiterating it all time and time. I don't trust you. I've lost confidence in you. I don't have any faith in your answers. You're going to give lies and corrupt words. I mean, uh, that's what he's telling them. Uh, they wanted time to come up with something and corrupt words. I look what's going on in our media and 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 and, and congressmen and all that. And you know, the weird thing is, says, well, uh, these politicians lie, but we elect them even though they lie. We know they lie. Why do we do that? We've accepted that they lie. And here, a king back there didn't want their lies, but yet we accept it today. We go, oh. Well, the president's not going to do what he said he did. That the congressman's not going to do. That rep, uh, house representative's going to do. Oh, they, they just talk. They, 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 they just lie to us. And yet we, we elect them anyway. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe that's why our government is, is, is supped up there and we can't trust them. We can't believe what they say. Because we've caught them in so many lies, even our news media. Uh, all over our news media. Uh, we, we see our news is, is, is so fabricated in many cases leaning one way or the other and doesn't tell us the whole truth, only tells us parts, only shows us. And we're, we've, we've lost the faith in a lot of our news media too, just like we have our government. We need to pray for those folks. We need to pray for their salvation first, that they come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and ask Him to come into their life because that's the first thing that, that's going to get them back on track. And so we need to do that. Um, in verse 10, I better go on and get off my rabbit trails here. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, This is not a man, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, 
there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things. No, there, there, there's no king or ruler would ever ask this kind of thing because nobody would ever know such things <clears throat> at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. So he was right. That's one, that's one thing they were right about. There's, there's nobody going to do it. Only God can do that. Um, no man is going to be able to tell the king. Uh, no man can do uh, what you want, he's saying. What you're asking, no man can do that. And like I said, they were right. You see, we depend on earthly human wisdom. wisdom. Most of the time you're going to get the wrong answer. You see. Uh, people go to psychiatrists. They go to astrologers. They go to mediums. They, uh, uh, people tell the fortune. They get all these people trying to get answers, and they don't have them. Now, there's nothing wrong with Christian counseling and stuff like that. Well, we depend on that totally. We could come up, because I've heard about some Christian counseling, and there's some pastors around here, too, that, wow, where in the world do they ever get that from? But secular counseling and all that really cannot solve our things. And when we really look for that, it's not going to work. Horoscopes and stuff like that is not going to work. Crystal balls um, is, isn't going to do any, anything like that that we have. It's not going to give us. We're going to end up the wrong answer. As Christians, we, we get our answers from the Word of God. So that's why you should, you should be here. You should be in church. You should be in Sunday school classes. You should be studying the Word of God on your own. Uh, when the doors are open, you need to be in the church because of that, because that's where we're going to get when we know the Word of God. We get our answers from three sources. The Word of God I just mentioned. That's one way we get it. We learn this like Daniel did. We, come, we get wisdom. We grow maturely, uh, spiritually. And we can understand the truths and we can see what's wrong because we know the truth. The second is the indwelling Holy Spirit. He is to illuminate us. He is to help us to understand Scripture. So we get it from the Word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit in us, Christ's Spirit. And then with prayer. That is where Daniel was. With prayer. When God revealed it to him, Daniel was praying. Prayer is, is where is going, is going to get his answers. Daniel was raised in a home where the Word of God was important. Think about this. Daniel prayed three times a day. Seventy years, three times a day. Roughly, if, if you go through that, um, you, you come up with about 70,000 times he prayed. <laughs> Think about that. Wow. He prayed all that time. Spent all that time praying to God to get with him. The Chaldeans in verse 10 answered him before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Then in verse 11, And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with the flesh. Um, that's true. Uh, there, this never, never has been before. Uh, they said we have never had this before. They were right. God has never revealed, as I mentioned earlier, never revealed history in a dream before to one person. This is unique. That's where it is. So only the God know the answer, and that is Jesus Christ. God's not in the flesh. Of course, they're talking about their gods. <coughs> We're talking about the true God, the one God, Jesus Christ, who is God in human flesh and who we will see when we get to heaven. That's who we will see. We will see Jesus. And verse 12. <coughs> For this cause, uh, Daniel volunteers to interpret the dream here. Uh, for this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Now, since Daniel there, hey, getting ready to go there, uh, like I say, this is the Magi that came uh, to where the Magi came from to see Jesus when he was born uh, this time. And Daniel is part of this group right now. And we figured that's probably why they understood what the prophecy was, was because of Daniel maybe doing some of his own teaching within the group instead of the group teaching him so much. So he says, and then, then I, I uh, to go and kill them. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his followers to be slain because was, he was with the, uh, with the wise men. So he sought them. They were going to kill them. And the decree went out 
And here he comes. He gets it. And then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch. I think that's how you pronounce it. The captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Um, see, one thing here, he's come here, he's, he's come to Daniel, Daniel, Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch. Okay? You see, when you, when you speak, when you, <coughs> when you speak, <coughs> always know the facts. Did you notice Daniel wasn't afraid? He just wanted to know why. Why, why, why did the king put the decree out here? I mean, I could see Daniel saying, wait a minute, Eric. I've been with you for two years. You know who we are. You know what it's like. I proved to you that my diet for my, for my God was right. You know I'm committed to my God. You know I pray to my God. Why is this happening? What did we do? Why is this happening? He wanted the facts. When you have, or have a problem or, or maybe you even hear a wild story about someone, get the facts before you believe it. It's just like a few things that come across, and uh, it looks like, I've looked a few minutes, it looks like Lou Dobb has lost his position at, at Fox Business Channel. Uh, but I didn't want to believe it at first because I've seen things come across Facebook or whatever, and I find out it's not true. So get the facts. And, and, and Daniel wasn't scared. He wanted the facts. He wanted to get the facts before he began to believe it. So 14, then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. In other words, he explained it to Daniel what was going on. And in verse 16, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would, ha he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation there. Now here's Daniel. Uh, I don't know if you want to make him 14 or 15, maybe 16 years old, 15, 16. Here's Daniel. He goes before this ruler, okay? This ruler just ruled people, just killed everybody, just took him captive. He's not afraid. He went into the king, the head man. You see, he wanted the facts, so he got the facts. He didn't panic. He said, let me know what's going on. He knew God was on his side. He knew God was going to protect him too. He had sense and knew he had God on his side. So he wasn't afraid. So he went and found it out. You know, you have that, that same thing in Matthew. If you're having a problem with somebody, before you leave your offering, go and settle that problem with that person. Did you notice that? So here it is all the way back in the Old Testament. Okay? But he goes against the facts. So before we decide to say something about something, maybe we ought to know the facts about things. We get caught up in that. And I've gotten caught up in that. Everybody has. It's, it's just a common thing that happens to us uh, because of our emotions and what we don't think. But we need to get the facts before we decide something. And so Daniel went to, and he went to the head man. He says, I got a problem. I got a problem with you, king. Why, why do you want to kill me? He explained to me that these uh, people can't do that. So I, I'm here to, uh, to, to, to doubt it, to solve, to solve this problem. I want to face it. I want to face it head on. So Daniel. In verse 6, then Daniel went into and desired of the king what, what, that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation there. Now, if you notice that the king says, okay, did you notice that? The other ones, he said, no, I'm not giving you any time. So you see how God was working, protecting Daniel. He gave him the braveness or the commitment to go to him, go to the king, tell the king, and Daniel made no bones about it. Uh, uh, you give me time, I'll do it. And the king knew because God was working on the king's heart. Wouldn't do it through the other one, but he did it with Daniel as he goes in and he meets the king. You see, one, always be willing to wait on God. You notice Daniel didn't say, I'm going to give you the answer tomorrow. No, he says, give me time. It doesn't say how much time. And it doesn't sound like it when we get the other scriptures here that it took too long. I don't know how much time. I can't find anybody who tells me how much time, and I haven't read everybody. i got a new book. But I don't think if there's, a, if there's a time difference, I'll let you know. But it's almost like it was the same day that he went from there. You see, Rosie died. Everything, we wait on God. Okay? We wait on God. We need to learn to do that. Daniel gets all the facts that he could. That's what he wanted to do. Daniel prayed. 
He laid it before God. He says, I can't solve this problem, Lord. I can't do it. I lay it before you. And he, and then what does he do? He shares it with his friends. Remember one, two or three gathered together? He shares it with his friends with prayers uh, is, is what he does in it. And I will show the king, verse 17. Oops. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. In other words, he gathered his friends, gathered his friends together, and they started praying. You see, we need to come together and, and pray. Uh, this is one thing we need to do to share those re requests uh, of others. We need to share them. Daniel wasn't afraid. He got his friends and gives it to them. In chapter 11 of, of, of Mark, verse uh, 20, 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. He believed. He believed God was going to answer his prayer. There was nothing. He prayed with faith. And then in Matthew 18, um, 19, and 20, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Yeah, here they are. He's praying. He gets them together. They, they had faith. They had, they had the key for the prayer to be answered. Their faith. They believed in God. He meditated on the word of God. He always sought God's word and wisdom. And he prayed for that. And it says in verse 19, where we're going to end. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the Lord, blessed the God of heaven. It's acting like he got this. He went back to his friends and maybe that night, I don't think there was a time frame. It looks like there's no distant difference there. But he got it that night because he believed and he was a man of God. And God revealed the revelation to him, the interpretation, the revelation of history coming in the interpretation. You see, he was a man of God. And God honored him and God watched over him and God used him because he was trying to live a righteous life and he honored God and he gave God the glory not himself but he gave God the glory for giving him the answer because he knew God do you really know God do you have a relationship with him maybe you know the stories of Jesus maybe you know stories of Daniel and Noah and everybody else and Moses but do you really know God have you saved that time in your life that you sat down and asked God ask Christ to come into your life forgive you of your sins have you done that have you ever done that on a personal relationship. Do you have a personal relationship with him? We should be seeking to have the same kind of relationship Daniel had. And hopefully, maybe if you don't, maybe you would sit down after this or during this and ask God into your life. Or ask God for wisdom. Do you pray to him? Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for understanding with this problem. Help to, to help you with this problem, to get through this, this crisis or whatever. Do you do that? Are you really trusting God? Do you depend on him like Daniel? Do you have the faith? Well, that, that takes us up to verse 19, and I'll do the rest of it a little bit later. But let me pray. Father, again, we just thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you for those that may be listening. We just ask that you use this, Father, to glorify you, Father, and to further your kingdom, and just to help some of those out there, Father, just to understand your word and to understand Daniel and those that understand, Father, how we need, Father, to depend on you, to look to you to get our answers from your word, your guidance of your Holy Spirit, and through prayer, prayer life. And, Father, may we do that. And for these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Love you.